This treatment is called bedazzled, and it's a spin-off of a treatment that I called vitreous, because vitreous means glass beads. Um, so I used a lot of beading in this finish, but there's four main components to this finish. And I, as you can see, and I'll go e through each one of these, many different ways that you can use those four different components. So what they really are is they're a metallic foil. They are using a cake decorator to do some embellishing to your design. They are using a raised design element. They're using a crackle finish and they're using beading. And if you're counting closely, that was five. So, but what I'm really looking for is the main four, is the metallic foils, the cake decorator, the um, beads, and the crackle finish. Those are the four. And each one of these will have those four components in it. So if you look at the very first one, this is bedazzled. And it was a really of a spin-off of a different finish that I did for a client, and we used Sikorsky crystals for her. This was her finish. It actually ran like this, and we had these beaded lines coming down, sort of like teardrops on the project, and we used real Sikorsky crystals to do the finish. Turned out absolutely beautiful. So this one I wanted to have something in silvers, so I slightly changed it, and you can see you can do clear crystal, these are just plastic beads from Michaels. You can use Sikorsky. You can use all kinds of Sikorsky, all kinds of different types of crystals or beads. This is a different one where I'm showing a different design element, different stencil. This is all somewhat monochromatic and so is this, but I've changed it. I have a darker base. I have a lighter on top. I have bigger beads. I have square beads. So again, this is some of the things you want to talk about. This. Same border, different colorway, same texture here, entirely different color. But look at the radical difference that you can get. Again, all four main components are in this with the foils, the beading, the crackling, and the cake decorator, take cake decorator item. Here was another one, very Mexican motif. I've used this particular finish, as you can see, many different times. Most of the time it's in a powder bathroom because it's uh, labor intensive and usually takes a while to do, but the drama and the wow factor is honestly like almost no other finish that I have. And that's why I sell this a lot. And a lot of times maybe I'll take a finish like this, do the walls, and then I take this as the border, but then I carry just that foiling part up onto the ceiling. So now it all ties harmoniously together. It's a beautiful effect. This is the one that had more of a Mexican flair to it. Look at the different types of beading that I use for that. This one back behind it is called Celtic foil because of the Celtic type of medallion that's back behind it. So that has a very unique look. Again, very pretty colorway. And the last one is I don't even have to use beading. I just did this one recently. And if you look at these colors real close, and if, you, if you've looked at some of the other downloads that I have, these colors are the exact colors that are used in one of our other finishes um, that we did earlier on. And it's a beautiful technique. So uh, these are a wide variety of ways. Let me show you the colors and the techniques and the materials that we're going to use for this and you can see there's quite a bit of them so let me come up front and I'll show you about all those. As you can see there's a lot of materials for this particular finish because of all the steps that I told you about but the end result is that I've said I think is just spectacular. So let me go through those materials for you. Again color choice, colorway, obviously you can see it could be anything but for Bedazzled which is the finish that we're actually going to show I'm going to talk about specific colors used just for that finish. And they come in a sample kit if you're interested in getting it at a very low price point. If you try to buy all these individually, it costs you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The sample kit is, you know, close to $30. So a huge savings that way. So let's start out. You have the off-white set coat, which is the neutral set coat. It used to be called off-white aqua bond. Now it's called Neutral Set Coat, and so that will be our base on this finish. The next product that I use is Palette Deco White, 
and I used that for the cake decorator as you can see here I have a cake decorator and it's already loaded with that but I also will be troweling it through the stencil that you see right on the front as well. Of course, the stencil selection is yours as you can see behind me. Many, many options. Choose a stencil that you find attractive, something that will work with your own particular project. This is just something that we have. We don't put stencils in the kits because we don't want to limit somebody on their choice. We will in our PDF file that you get with the download talk to you specifically about the stencil that is used in case you want that exact one. You can order it from the manufacturer. But we don't include that into the sample kit. So let's go to the next product. The next product is called Set Coat Tote. And I'll uh, describe why I use that as we get into the finish. But basically, it hides a lot of my flaws from when I originally do my layout of my pattern. Then I'm going to use one to size, which is a water based size. And the one to size will get sticky, and then I can transfer my foils. I'll be using three foil colors, and I'm going to be using silver, bright silver, gunmetal, and black. Those will be the three foil colors that I'll be using. After that's done, I go and use a material called aqua size, which gets sticky. The whole purpose of the, and it's different than one to size. It doesn't work the same at all. This is meant for transferring foils and transferring gold leaf or silver leaf, metal leaf, imitation leaf. This is meant to have a product crack on purpose. This doesn't make things crack, not on purpose. It does make things crack, but that's not what it's designed for. This is designed to make things crack on purpose. So we put this down and then I'm going to put a clear crackle medium on top of it called aqua crackle clear. So that clear, clear crackle medium will crack and give me an eggshell pattern that I can then stain on top of and that's what creates that illusion underneath. Why do I want clear? Well obviously I want to see all my beautiful work underneath. So by using the clear crackle, it gives me an aged look, and I can still see all that beautiful work that I did in the beginning. Next, I'm going to use Ebony Stain and Seal, which is a stain and seal project, a product that I'm able to put on the surface and just tone down that metallic element and give me a real pretty patina on top. Last, to add to my B that I buy at Michael's, um, you know, I end up using a paste called Yes Paste. It's a glue that allows my beads to be applied on a vertical surface. One pop, it's in place, doesn't move unless I want to move it. Stays there indefinitely once it's hard and dry, which takes hours and hours, it's on like a rock. So it's fantastic. So let me clear all of this off now and I'm going to show you uh, some of the first steps. Then I'll take a slight break in between because I need to reload my work area again and then I'll move on to the last uh, part of the process. So let me take a break. I'll be right back through the magic of TV or DVDs. As you can see I've cleared off my table space so I can actually work on my sample now. Um, as I've told you there's a lot of product involved in this process so and you can create many different designs like we've shown you in the back so, but for the bedazzled design, I've decided to use that sort of a teardrop technique. So I want to talk to you about how to lay that out now. And the first thing is, I'm going to use my border stencil. And you can see I have a stencil here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mist it with water, because this is what I would do on the job site. I mist it slightly with water. And now on the job, I would take this and I'm going to put it right against the edge of the ceiling, hugging that ceiling line, lining it up like I want to have it butted right against the ceiling. Now this gives me a perfect edge where I can draw my pencil line right underneath the edge of the stencil using the stencil as my border. The nice thing about this is sometimes the ceilings undulate, they're never perfectly even, they're not level, especially in some older houses. This way the border looks like it flows with your ceiling. So it's a good pro tip. That's the way I always do that. And then I don't have to worry about, well, I'm perfectly level, but the wall looked like this. So my stencil looks all whopper jawed. So that was a technical term if you didn't get that. So now what I want to do is I want to show you the benefits of why I misted it with water. If I do that on a job, 
it hugs right on to the surface. I don't have to do any spray adhesive. I don't have to tape it up. I don't have to do anything. It sticks because of the suction of the water back behind it. So that said, let's talk about how I lay out the rest. Oh, one other point. If I have my stencil and I know it's only so long, I have to figure out the math around the room to figure out how many of these stencils would fit in with a little space in between. So I just figure out the length of this, I figure out the length all the way around the perimeter of my room, do a little subtraction of what one uh, pattern would be or an addition. You know, let's say I would think, well, 10 of those would give me 290 inches and I have 320 inches, so I got 30 inches left over, so I'll have a three inch gap in between each one. Something like that. So that's basically how I figured. So I get something aesthetically that looks good. I try to have a full pattern, you know, um, on my main focal wall in the center, and I spread out from that. So I want my center point, my main viewpoint, to be the best look. And then I die in a corner behind the, the door if I got something where it doesn't fit perfect. I always put it in some obscure point. Now, that said, then I want to do my teardrop pattern. And I've decided mathematically that I want to go 2 inch, 4 inch, 2 inch, 4 inch to give me, you know, thick, thin, thick, thin variation. So I've already measured that out here on top and I've already drawn a couple of my lines. So I'm going to now do my next two inch line and I always use a level on the job site so I can make sure that my line is level. On the job we also use laser level beams now which are great. I don't even have to pencil it up anymore because I just do little tick marks for where my line is. I shoot my laser beam at it and I use my cake decorator right against the laser beam way faster than what I'm showing you here, but if you don't have a laser level, this works great. So I take that now and I find my little dots and then I just draw my space down so I have my lines and I know where they are. And then here's my next line over here. And now what I'm going to do is now I know where those lines are. I want to have my gaps where I can put my beads. I knew mathematically I'm going to do four inches apart for each one. But I want to stagger them to create that sort of a teardrop look. So my one, let's say this is the bottom of my floor. I'm going to start and it's going to be two inches up. The next one would be six because two and four is six. I'm pretty good at this though my grades in high school would not say I was pretty good at that. Then I go 10, and then the last one is at 14. So, and if you make a mistake, you just erase it, like I did there. So then my next one will be, instead of two up, I'm gonna go four up, which gives me that staggered effect. Then I go eight, then I go 12. So every time I see a little tick mark on my line, that tells me leave a gap so I can put my bead in that gap. Don't take my cake decorator to the gap. Stop oh, a quarter of an inch above it, eighth of an inch above it, eighth of an inch below it, and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that in a minute. But for now, let me go ahead and use my palette deco white, and I'm going to put it on a plastic trowel, and I'm going to trowel right through my stencil. Now remember, do all your math first because it's going to be messy. You're going to make mistakes. Don't try to put up your stencil or your lines until you know exactly where they belong. Uh, and I would know that because I make mistakes. So um, take this now and I'm going to trowel through it. I'm going to kind of scrape smoothly at first. And then I'm going to lay it on there just a little heavier. So I create some dimensionality, but I usually do this because this also helps tack my stencil in place. Uh, even though the water is there helping, this also helps secure that stencil up when I do that slight skip. Now I'm going to come through it and you can see the actual dimension that I'm doing. You see how I'm holding the blade? I'm holding it on the edge and I'm letting it flat. It's like sort of uh, icing a hot cake. You cannot press too hard, you'll bleed underneath,
but you want to have just enough material on there that you can get some raised dimensionality. Now, on a job, I'm just about done with this with the right dimensionality. On a job site, what I would do is I would take this same stencil, I would lift it straight up like this, and I would move it right to my next tick mark, place it down, and scrape all that loose stuff right into the stencil, tacking it in place. If for some reason the back of my stencil was real messy, which it's not right now, I'd have to clean off my whole stencil before I did that again. It's okay to have a few bleeds, big nasty bleeds, mm, not too good. If you have a real bad spot, don't worry about it, because you'll see later on, you just take your blade and scrape it right off. It won't matter. This part, like right, right there, so what? I just take that and it goes away, because I'm going to show you how to not worry about that later. This is my cake decorator, and I already have the palette deco in here. This is a number five round cake decorator tip, and I'm going to do a smooth straight line across the top. I'm just going to squeeze this, and I'm going to slight squeeze of my pressure, and I'm going to create that bead as I go. You'll see that right now, and you just want to have a constant pull on that material. And it's okay if it gets a little gap here and there. I mean, it's never going to be exactly perfect. That's part of the beauty of it being hand done. So don't worry about being obsessed with it being perfect because oftentimes actually perfect doesn't look as pretty as hand done. So that said, my lines coming down I want to do slightly different. I want to have a little push-pull with the movement of it. And uh, so I'm going to take my cake decorator and I'm going to do a little, see the little jiggle that I have going? And then I left my gap, as you can see, on purpose. And I'm leaving my gap again because my tick mark is there that tells me, uh-oh, bead's going to be there later. Leave me a gap so the bead will fit flush on the surface. We had a friend of ours that helped do this one time and she ended up calling this fish poo, fish pool, something. I'm not quite sure what it was, but uh, it was so funny. Uh, and as you know, if you work on job sites, boy, some of the things that you end up talking about, it's kind of crazy. So I'm going to just continue this down. I'm not going to show the whole board because I think you get the idea after I've done two rows. Sometimes you get a little glob. That's what happened right here of the cake decorator, you know. So sometimes you have to get rid of that big old mess because it was a, I don't know, clog in it. So this is a great example to say, I didn't like that, gone. So I took rid of it. I could have changed that whole line up here if some of you were thinking, oh my gosh, I never would have left a line like that. Well, zip, take it off. It's up to you. You're the artist of your own board. You know, so if that would have bothered you, fix it. If uh, you're a person that, you know, that doesn't bother, then that's fine too. This is why it's your art and your choice. I'm just giving you some ideas on how you can do a wide variety of things. So I'm going to stop on that one because I think that really gives you the idea of how to do it. You can see the variety of the pattern. I did my uh, stenciling up here. I have my straight line and I have my little beaded line down below. Last thing I want to show you is I want to do paint on top of this real quick because this hides all those mistakes you might have made through the pencil or you might have made any other way. So this is taupe aqua bond that I talked to you about. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to paint it solid. One coat is all I need. And I'm just going to paint it nice and solid. And this will also make my foil look more solid in my next move. So I take that, move that out of the way. And my last step I want to show before I take a break is applying the one to size, which is the water-based size that I talked to you about. You can see it's clear, it gets milky, 
when it's wet, but when it's dried, it will not be milky at all. It'll turn totally clear and become sticky, and that allows me to put my stencil on top of it. Uh, not my stencil, my uh, metallic foils on top of that. So that's the last step for now. Let me clean up and I'll take a break and I'll set up for the next stage. So through the magic of TV or, you know, DVDs or eight track tapes. Oh, that might have showed my age a little. Sorry, cassettes. Well, that probably still made me show my age. Anyway, um, I am back and this is now tacky. You can hear the tackiness. A lot of times I'll apply two coats of one to size on something that has a dimensional texture to it. So I have to let the one to size go clear and then get sticky and then put another coat on, let it go clear and get sticky. So for me, what I try to do is two coats of one to size in one day, wait overnight, because the one to size will stay sticky on your surface for up to, I've transferred up to 60 hours. Any longer than that, I don't have personal knowledge of, but I can attest that will stay great for at least 60 hours. So you don't have to worry about, will it still be sticky the next day? It, trust me, it will be sticky. So that said, I want to go ahead and be careful at this point. I've already cut my foil and I'm gonna line it up just so it goes on the top section of my area because I'm making that solid silver because I chose to make that be a contrasting border. So I put that down, I can push it in place. Now I take my scrub brush and I scrub it in place, being careful not to go past my line that we just talked about. Many times on raised images, you have to sit in here and take, oh, you know, the back of a brush or something and help get into some of these areas. Most of the time, I just take my fingertips and work in and around the pattern. It does take a little bit of time. The scrub help brush helps tremendously, especially if you push really hard. See the difference from when I pressed harder? Because I get down really tight around that pattern. So I'm gonna lift that up. I got great transfer. The reason why I use a complementary color is because it makes it look like it transfers even really more than it does. If you see a few spots that you think, ah, oh, you know, I missed a spot, just go back in with your fingers, press it down, and it's okay to have some halo around your surface. So don't worry about that, you know, because actually it adds to the finish once again, as I said. So now I want to do my field area. I'm gonna take and crumple up my silver. Shiny side of foil always goes up, never down to transfer. And I'm gonna sort of rock it back and forth because I want multiple colors in here. I don't want just one color. I want this to be three colors, predominantly silver and gunmetal are the two colors that I'm looking for predominantly. So I'm going to go up and down, back and forth. It's okay with the silver to go up in here because it's already silver and I try to transfer as much as I can. So that's not a problem on my transferring. So I'm about done with my silver and I'm looking for, I would say, you know, 50% coverage or more of that color, as you can see. And you might want to take your fingers down the edge of those beads that you put in there to create and you know bring that color right up against that edge a little bit better as I just showed you. I'm gonna come down and do it once more here. Okay, I'm done with that. If you can see real quick what I just said. It's got good coverage. Now I'm gonna take my gunmetal color, the same thing. I'm gonna do the same treatment. This time I'm being careful because it's not the same color as up here. And I'm going to be careful to make it go right on top of my foil down below, but not on top. I really don't want to go on top. So I'm scrubbing it. Now I'm pushing harder. And I'm getting less transfer, obviously on purpose, because foil does not transfer where there's foil. It will only transfer where there is sticky size. 
So I can take it, you know, and I can hold it up here like this. I can hold foil in any direction, it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to take my fingers against that edge again. I'm using two, my thumb and my index finger when I did that. It's going to go right down that edge. Do it once more. Find the next one. Do it once again. And see how this is touching? It's okay to slightly touch. What's bad is if I press hard while it's touching. That's what I don't want to do. That's where I have to be careful. Now, if there wouldn't have been silver foil up here and this touched, whoop, I could get a transfer. So you have to be careful with all that. Last step with the foil, I'm going to add in the black. And I'm going to press in hard again with the black. And you see I scrub both ways, north, south, east, west. Peel it back up. You can see just a hint comes off, but enough that gives it a little more depth and character than what was on top. Go down next to that edge again. Come back up, one more slight pass, and I'll call that finished. And I am, I'm done. And you can see from that transfer, I got a really nice transfer. I got one little spot that looks odd. Fix that. Okay. Now I want to put on my aqua size. And my aqua size is the agent that will get sticky. It's very gooey and has a not a very pleasant odor. So use a fan when you're in the room, especially if you're in a small bathroom. Ventilate the space because this does have a rather strong odor to it. Can you smell it? Oh, maybe you can't. I can. Stinks. So look how the color is. This is tricky stuff here. So in all seriousness, you don't want to put this on and fuss with it. You put it on and leave that area alone. Because once it starts to go clear again, it goes frosty right now. But if it starts to go clear on me and I'm fussing with it, it'll peel up like sunburned skin does. Uh, it just flakes and peels right off the surface. So you need to really be careful. So I put it on and I leave that area alone. And I'm going every which direction. I'm not trying to create a pattern. So that's done. I'm going to move on to my next step. I'm going to move this out of the way because that's wet and it'll stay wet for ooh, an hour, two hours, depending on humidity. It's sticky now, listen, and it's clear. That's a good sign. Because now what I want to do is I want to put on my Aqua Crackle Clear, which is a big clear medium. And I want to go ahead and put that on. And I'm going to roll that in a similar manner in a north, south, east, west pattern that I talked to you about. As you can see, I'm putting that on. And I want to put it on heavy. You can see how heavy this looks. You know, you might think that it's not, you could, should put it on thin. Well, if you want to get a medium sized crack, you want to put it on a little heavier than you do if, if you, um, instead of putting it on too thin. A little too thin gets a little very fine high hairline cracks. There's other ways to do that. If you want super big cracks, put down two coats of the aqua size, but this usually ends up being great. That amount of material ends up being great for a nice eggshell crackle. Put that off to the side. And now I'm going to use my, and you can see it's cracked. You can see, can you see all that crackle in there? It looks great. So that's the kind of eggshell crackle. It drew totally clear and it usually takes Oh, uh, you know, four hours or more so before it'll crack, maybe even longer. I'm going to mist this now with water, and I'm going to use my ebony stain and seal. And I'm doing that because I don't want to use this straight because it's very concentrated. So um, I'm going to put this on just a little bit, as you saw, because I don't want my color real dark. I'm going to use a Leon Neon, and I'm going to scrub that into my finish 
just to sort of knock back that metallic sheen a little bit. Much better. Just add in a little bit here and there. Even it out a little, pounce it, stipple it. You know, this is your artistic choice on how you want to do that. And the last step is to put on the beading. So now, on here, I could do that pretty much right away. I could wait. But the, the idea is, is to use the yes paste, which is this paste right here, and put a little dollop, that's all you need, on the bottom of your bead, find your, one of your blank spots, and set it right in place. And you can see, even on that wet glaze, that's not going to fall off of there. That's why Yes Paste is so awesome. The stuff is great. So you would continue that around your space, alternating the sides of your beads from thick and thin, you know, small and large. Do your spacing, whatever you find to be the most attractive for your space. And that one was too big for my eye. I'm going to go with a little bit smaller one there. So that's the kind of thing that you would do. I don't think you need to see me do that. And then I can put beads up here as well as an accent area. So it's your choice. As you can see on the back, many different ways to apply the beads. It all depends on what you would like in your specific design. But that is how we do the bedazzled finish. I hope you liked it.